Today, we are building our own lithium battery from scratch. It's gonna use high quality components and still be cheaper than almost any other battery you'll find on the market. And the best part is you can easily do this yourself. G'day guys, welcome back to Aussie Arvos. Now, a few of you guys would have seen recently that I killed my King's lithium battery. We actually pulled it apart, tore it down, and we found that it had a bunch of watergress inside. That fried the BMS and actually killed a couple of the cells. And so then I was left wondering, should I buy another King's battery because they're so cheap? Should I get something that's a bit more high quality upmarket or should I build my own? And well, a bunch of you guys commented that you wanted to see us build our own battery. So that is exactly what we're gonna do today. Now, before I run through all of the components I'm using, I want you guys to keep in mind that the idea with this is to reuse the King's battery case. It's a sleek style. It fits right up under the tray where all my cabling is already run to. And not to mention, it would have cost a bit extra to find another case. Now, another objective of building this battery is to build a battery that is almost the same price as what I originally paid for this one, but is actually far better in quality and the components inside. Now, when I was looking into building a lithium battery, it actually seemed like a bit of a daunting task, but the more research I did, the easier I found it would actually be. And what you can see here on the table is literally everything we need to build this lithium battery. Now, our first component is our battery cells themselves. Now, these are our four prismatic cells. Now, you remember when we tore this down, this battery actually contained pouch cells. And the difference there is that these actually have a hard casing. They're much more durable and they're a lot easier to connect up in series as well if you're doing it yourself. Now, these are the lithium cells that I've bought. These are an Eve branded lithium battery cell and Eve is actually a Chinese battery manufacturer. And when I was reading through all the forums, doing research for this project, everyone recommended I use Eve branded cells because they're known for their high quality batteries. Now, I actually managed to get these from a shop that's based in Queensland. It was just an online store. And honestly, at the time, me and Patrick were a bit sus on whether we we're actually gonna get them to our door or not. But for $360 for the four cells and that's to our door delivered, we were pretty happy. Now, these cells specifically are 105 amp hour at 3.2 volts which when we wire all four in series will give us 105 amp hours at 12 volt which is actually five more amps than what we had out of our king's battery now these cells are actually a grade a lithium cells which means they're the closest to the manufacturing parameters of the battery and this means that you're going to have better performance for longer now it's important to use grade a cells because sometimes when you get your old cheapo battery they can often use b grade cells which can be slightly out of tolerance or they may even be second hand and they're just simply not going to work or last as long so the idea behind this is to get years and years of good performance while being at a very similar price or cheaper to similar spec batteries that are just coming off the shelf now in order to to actually make these cells usable so we can charge and discharge them we have to use a battery management system now just like the cells we've gone for a quality bms now this is actually a dali bms we got it for 60 dollars on ebay and i was actually recommended this particular bms by a friend as well as many forums online as they're great for these kind of diy projects this particular bms is a 4s 12 volt 100 amp meaning it's to suit four cells wide in series and is good for 100 amps of discharge now, a great feature of this particular BMS is that it's actually completely sealed and waterproof, which means when we have it in our case, if the case does get punctured or gets water inside, the BMS will continue to work and keep our cells safe, unlike the last BMS that was in there that died. Now, as for our last few little components here, Next, we have our bus bars, which is for connecting our four cells in series. And these actually came with the cells, which is super handy. And lastly, I've also gone and bought some epoxy insulation sheets. These are super cheap off eBay, about 25 bucks. And these are used for when you're assembling the battery to add an extra layer of insulation between the cells. So with all our components ready to go, let's start building our battery. Now, our first step is to connect our cells in series. Now, there's a couple ways you can sort of do this depending on how you want your battery to fit or the space that it needs to take up. Now, generally, this bat these cells, I suppose, are designed to be connected in series in the formation they're currently in. That's only limited by the bus bars that it's been sent with, so they're the right width to span between the cells in this formation. But in order to fit in my casing, I'm actually gonna have to orientate them like this in order to keep its slimline profile. Now, this was actually a big point of consideration when deciding what cells I was gonna buy because I had to make sure that they'd all fit inside this casing and I could still connect them all correctly in series. If you're not limited by the casing that they need to fit into, there are actually a lot bigger batteries you can fit in such a small amount of space. So that's why I'm still only running like a 105 amp hour battery because I needed to fit in this case. Now, to get the battery to work in the particular configuration that I wanted, I've had to create some of my own bus bars just to join the terminals. Now, the ones that it come with are only long enough to orient the battery all side by side like so. So I've just made some longer ones which will bridge the gap like that and then it'll all fit together nicely. All right, now the next thing, so now I know I've got my bus bars sorted. Next, I'm gonna start figuring out what sheets I've got to cut in order to 
separate everything correctly. They're pretty much, I reckon I could pretty much cut a sheet down the middle and have two sheets there like. All right, completely encased. So with our insulation all done around each cell, all faces protected, uh, next I'm gonna stick the bus bars on and just make sure that all the cells are sitting happy where they need to be before we go and secure them together. So these individual cells have a capacity of 105 amp hours at 3.2 volts. So in order to get that to our 12 volt battery, we need to wire these in series so that we'll end up with a 12 volt battery still with a capacity of 105 amp hours. If you were to connect these in parallel, you'd end up with a 420 amp hour battery, but at a nominal voltage of 3.2 volts. So we don't want that. So we're gonna be connecting them in series, which means our positive terminal goes to our negative terminal of the next cell. So I'm gonna treat these cells as cell one, two, three, and four, which will be important when we connect up our BMS. So starting with our bus bars, we can just, for now, get our screws. And with any luck, these should all fit together nicely. So I've got the bus bars connected and just as a little test, if we test one individual cell, we should have a voltage of 3.2 volts, just as we hoped. And if I check the terminals now of the ends of the batteries after the series completion, then we should have, hopefully, 13.14 volts. There you go, just like that, how easy. This, is, this seems too easy. It does seem too easy. <laughs> Now, when it comes to sticking our cells together, we're actually gonna be using tape. Now, that might sound a bit cheap or not the, quite the right way to do it, but that's actually the way that all these lithium battery cells are assembled together because it's lightweight, it's non-conductive, and because it's tape, it's not gonna be the hardest surface that will potentially wear through your battery casing uh, and cause damage. We're gonna be using cloth tape because unlike normal electrical tape, it doesn't have any elasticity or stretch. So that means once we wrap it around tightly around the cells, it's gonna keep them held in tight and it'll also help prevent the cells from expanding and contracting as they cycle. That's pretty much our lithium battery essentially assembled and that's sturdy as. Those cells are super tight together, which is fantastic, they're all nice. And, and that's the other thing too, which I probably should have mentioned, which I we're on us looking up how to do this. Um, make sure all your cells are square and all the faces, you know, sit nice and flush against each other and they don't roll back and forth, which because these are new and they haven't expanded um, and they've been, you know, they're A grade quality, they were nice and flat against each other. So yeah, we've got an awesome, nice rectangular box. Um, yeah, wicked, stoked. Yeah, it doesn't weigh that much at all. Like pretty sure these cells weighed 1.8 kilos each or something. So that's at the moment, you know, just shy of eight kilos, um, which is pretty good really. So with our battery assembled, we can now move on to installing the BMS. Now, when it comes to the BMS, it's pretty simple to install. It pretty much consists of a P negative wire, which we've extended, but that connects the battery cells to the terminals on your battery case. It also consists of a B negative wire, which goes to a negative terminal on our number one cell. And it also has a plug port at the end with five wires and these are our battery cell balancing wires. So essentially we've got a negative and then a positive for each of the cells one through four and that's responsible or the BMS is responsible for balancing the voltages of the cell so it discharges and charges evenly. So we've got to plug all these little wires onto the terminals uh, and I'm pretty much going to be strapping this to the side like so and that'll make sure it all fits and is out of the way and our little extended wire here will easily go up to our terminal. Now, when it comes to our balance wires on the plug, you actually have to be very careful in which wire you connect to which cell. So if you actually look at the cell, and I'll show you here quickly, when you look at the plug, your first black wire, that's your negative wire, and then you count from the black wire across to know which wire goes to which cell. So essentially, the first wire closest to the black is the positive for cell one, and then it goes cell one, so then cell two, three, and four. I mean, that should be a working lithium battery. We're all connected, we've got all our balancing wires connected. We've got our made positive and negative, which will now just connect to our case terminals. I'm gonna put a bit more insulation on the top of top and bottom, and then we can give it a test run. We'll get the car up here and we'll plug it in and see if it'll accept charge and discharge. If I bought a battery and it looked like that, I'd probably be pretty happy. Now, wow, well, yeah, maybe that looks a tiny bit dodged, but now that I know what now I've pulled apart one. I know what the, the bottom of the barrel looks like. <laughs> so I think in comparison, this is, looks pretty good. 
All right, so before we go and package up our battery in its case for the last time, we have to make sure that it is working properly. So I've brought the patrol up, I've got the terminals free, so we're literally just gonna dummy it up on some blocks, connect it all, and then we can run the car, draw off it, and make sure that it's charging correctly. And the way we're gonna be able to monitor that is through the Victron Smart Chunt. So if it is receiving charge, it's gonna tell me how much current's coming in or out. And hopefully, with any luck, it should all work properly. So let's bang it in there and see how we go. How have we got a voltage in the cab to begin with? 13.3 volts, that's a good start. <laughs> so the first test is to see if the battery charges. Now usually these lithium cells are stored at around 50% um, capacity for safety and it, it's good for the health of the cell. So there should definitely be some space for us to charge into it. So I guess this is just the moment of truth, Paddy. <laughs> yes, <laughs> charging, it's charging, there you go. So got 17, 19 amps going in. Oh, that's a good start anyway. So it charges. So I just got the canopy wired up. We're gonna check that it's working by running some lights. So I think the fridge is going too, but if I turn the lights on, there you go, four and a half amps coming off the battery. So I'm pretty confident in saying that it's all working properly, which is awesome. So that means we can stick it in the box, wrap it up, and then we can stick it under the car. Uh, I reckon that's pretty well packaged, you reckon? Yeah. All right, so we've got the battery all pretty much neatly packaged and we're pretty much ready to drop it into our battery case. Now, obviously, because this is a heck of a lot smaller than the casing, we need something to sort of pack it out so that it can't move and jiggle around inside. So we've got some high density, you know, solid foam from some of, just some packaging from some parts and stuff we've had in. Uh, and I think this stuff's gonna work really well because it's gonna be easy to cut out. I can stack layers of it to get the right thickness I need. And I'm pretty much just gonna make it so this battery cannot move in any direction uh, once it's all packaged up. So we're ready to assemble the battery. Now, I am gonna be using um, like an adhesive to also sort of glue the battery to the bottom of the casing just to help, like even though it's packed out tight with foam, it's also just gonna help with it not moving around. Uh, and then I'm gonna be using the same sealant to seal the lid when we stick it all back together. So fingers crossed it'll be fully waterproof, but for now, we'll start gluing and packing. All right, good luck. Bon voyage. All the best on Hopefully the... Hopefully we're not seeing you again anytime Yeah, I, I, hope, I hope I never see this battery again. Because <laughs> that means we succeeded. So that's in there. Then, first step, I'm gonna get my side packaging. Put that in there. In case I'm paranoid about these moving inside the casing, is just jam a bit of sealant in behind them. All right, with those done, next, side packaging. Tell this battery ain't gonna be moving anywhere in a hurry. All right, that's in there like that. I know this may not look the neatest, but at the end of the day, it's the inside of a battery, so. It's also worth mentioning that I've tried to leave a bit of room around the BMS just for heat dissipation. I don't plan on it getting too hot, and I'm sure it's designed to a spec that at its full rate of capacity, it doesn't get too hot, but definitely something to consider. Also, I've taken into account which side is the top and bottom once mounted in the car. So my bottom layer here, I've put on a much thicker packaging um, to help protect the battery, as well as the BMS actually being mounted effectively off the ground. So hopefully everything should be all happy. Like, I think there's not moving in. All right, next we can connect our main leads to the terminals and then pack out the top and then we got to run and beat a silicon all around the inside here all around the inside here seal it together and say goodbye all right ooze is good that's what we want all right now i'm just using f clamps to clamp this together to keep force while the glue hardens and look this might not look a1 but at the end of the day as long as it doesn't get water in who cares Probably a good time to check we're still getting 13 volts at the terminals. <laughs> now, I'm not 100% sure if the silicon will be enough to hold the casing together once I take the clamps off. So as a precautionary measure, I'm gonna put a couple loops of the cloth tape around just to help hold it together. And then once it's in the mount under the tray, that'll help hold it together as well. So, but it doesn't hurt to have these on there for that extra bit of, you know, strength. 
All right, so the battery is all boxed up. Last thing to do is let it dry. So we'll come back in 24 hours and we should be right to throw it in the car. So the sealant has had a chance to cure overnight. Now the last thing I've done is just add a strip of cloth tape just around the mating surface between the lid and the bottom of the case, just as an extra layer of protection. And with that, a battery is ready to throw in the car. I think it's come up pretty good. There's no movement of the battery inside. It's all well packed in, which is good. And yeah, the best thing about this battery is that I built it myself. So it is no longer a King's 100 amp hour slimline lithium battery. It is now an Aussie Arvo's 105 amp hour slimline lithium battery with waterproof BMS. So we'll just do that. Very nice, it's now an Aussie Arvo's battery. Let me know if you want one. <laughs> and yeah, we're gonna go throw this thing in the car. So let's do it. All right, so it's been a couple weeks since we put the lithium battery under the patrol and we're back now in central New South Wales and we've been testing it out for the last week or so and I can safely say so far that it has been working awesome. I've been doing a variety of things with the battery, such as running the inverter to charge uh, the Katana batteries for the chainsaw. Uh, we've had the Jaffel iron running off it as well on the inverter, drawing like, you know, 85, 90 amps off of it and it's all been sweet, haven't had an issue, as well as running all the usual appliances. So the fridge has been running nonstop the whole time. Lights have been going and worth noting too, while I was at the full drive show, the car was parked for about four days with the fridge running the whole time. And I think in that time I only used like 20, 25 amps, 20, or like, you know, a quarter of the battery. And I, look, this could just be me, but I actually reckon that the cells, perhaps I'm getting actually more out of them because it, I haven't dropped the battery below 60% yet. So it's been running really well and yeah, super stoked. And if anything does end up going funky with it, you guys will be the first ones to know. So yeah, we'll just have to keep and see how it goes with all the stuff I put it through. So that's the battery build complete. Now, if you want to build a battery yourself, I'm going to leave links down to all the stuff I bought in the description below. So go check that out. And if you enjoyed seeing us make batteries and want to see us do more cool stuff like it, make sure you hit subscribe, hit the like button, and we'll be sure to see you in the next one. Cheers, guys.